Glenn Theodore Seaborg is one of the most extraordinary scientists and chemists ever known. His explorations in the fields of chemistry and physics led to historic breakthroughs. His shared knowledge is not only with other scientists, but with his students and colleagues as well. These encounters and exchanges were recognized on an international level. His hard work not only helped end World War II, but helped generations of students. My father had the privilege of having Dr. Seaborg as an advisor in college and share with me what a great man he was. Throughout his life, Glenn Seaborg has won many awards, found new elements, and even worked on the Manhattan Project. But it is his love for science and education that is his legacy. Glenn Seaborg was born in Ishburn, Michigan to Selma and Herman Seaborg on April 19, 1912. He had one younger sister named Jeanette. He learned Swedish before he learned how to speak English from his immigrant mother. Since his family was poor, at age 10, he moved to Southern California in hopes of creating a better life. He went to Jordan High School and was great at interacting with other students and his teachers. His junior year science teacher, Dwight Logan Reed, introduced him to his lifelong favorite subject, chemistry. With his love for chemistry and hard work, Seaborg group graduated at first in his class and was valedictorian. After graduating high school, he entered the University of California, Los Angeles in 1929. Although he had a love for physics, chemistry was his true passion. In 1933, while he was still an undergraduate at UCLA, his German teacher introduced Seaborg to a fellow scientist who became a friend and mentor. That scientist's name was Albert Einstein. Seaborg received his Ph.D. in chemistry from UC Berkeley in 1937. After leaving Berkeley, Seaborg became the personal assistant of Gilbert and Lewis, a chemical scientist known for his work in bonding and ionic pairs. While he was working during the day for Lewis, Seaborg would mix acids and bases for him. But at night, Seaborg would use his science equipment for studying the atom. Their work was mainly creating isotopes that never existed. One day, a nuclear medical scientist came into the lab of Lewis and Seaborg complaining about the facts that his studies were limited by a 25-minute half-life of an atom he was working on. A half-life of an atom refers to how long it would take for an atom to reach a 50% decay. Intending to help, Seaborg had discovered an atom with an 8-day half-life. This became known as iodine-131. Iodine is used for diagnosis and treatment of disease. This discovery even extended his own mother's life by a number of years. Over time, Seaborg had discovered more elements like americum, which is still used in smoke detectors, and tectanium-99, which is also still used to diagnose people. In 1939, Dr. Seaborg was appointed as an instructor in chemistry at the University of California, Berkeley. In February 1941, he was appointed assistant professor in chemistry. During this time, Seaborg was working with a grad student named Arthur Wall and a chemistry instructor, Joseph Kennedy from Berkeley. They used a 60-inch cyclotron to take uranium atoms and hit them with deuterons, or the nucleus of the isotope deuterium. These became known as plutonium-239. About the discovery, he told the Associated Press of a 1947 interview, I was a 28-year-old kid, and I didn't stop to ruminate about it. I didn't think, my god, we've changed the history of the world. They held back on the public announcement when they discovered that plutonium is the element which makes the atomic bomb explode. Within months, Japan attacked Pearl Harbor and America was at war. Seaborg was on a train to Chicago with his new bride, Helen Griggs, to head a section of the top-secret Manhattan Project. His new mission seemed impossible, to create a handmade procedure to quickly mass-produce an element that existed in such a small area or quantity that no one could even see. The process of creating the bomb was difficult. Once the work began, no one could make any adjustments or changes without getting a lethal dose of radiation. Seaborg stated that it was like sending an astronaut to the moon without testing the rockets first. He worked on an average 12 hours a day and 6 days a week, and was hospitalized for exhaustion. There were some setbacks to the project, for example. One night, a worker had overloaded a shelf with radiation shielding lead. The shelf fell onto a bench, and one-fourth of the world's supply of plutonium absorbed into the Sunday paper. Even though they had encountered delays, the crew kept a perfect schedule. After three years of hard working, they made enough plutonium for two bombs. There was a lot of talk about the bombs and if they were going to be used for destructive purposes to end the war. When Seaborg had finished building the bomb, he teamed up with a few other scientists and wrote the Frank Report. The Frank Report states that the scientists of the Manhattan Project pleaded not to use the bombs in the war. If they allowed the bombs to be used, no one would survive. Though the team of scientists sent the report to President Truman, the recommendation was ignored. After the war, Seaborg returned to Berkeley where he was made a full professor in chemistry in 1946. 
When he returned to work, he and his friend, Edward McMillan, worked together and synthesized eight more elements, expanding the periodic table by 10%. He found that synthesizing the elements takes a lot of planning because when a new element is created, there are only a hundred atoms to test, so they cannot afford to waste any. The senior colleagues warned him about losing his reputation and that he was completely idiotic to do such a thing. Seaborg took this chance and began to discover the eight new elements and added them to the periodic table. His gamble paid off. In, in 1951, November, he had won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry along with his friend, Edward McMillan. At only the age of 39, Seaborg was one of the youngest winners of the Nobel Prize. From 1954 to 1961, Seaborg became the assistant director of the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory, or LRL. During his time at LRL, he was appointed to the Atomic Energy Commission's General Adversary Committee by President Truman. While he was working in the committee, he was the only member to suggest that the United States should develop the hydrogen bomb because the Soviet Union would eventually do so. He held this post until 1960, when he became the chairman of President Eisenhower's Science Adversary Committee where he drafted up the Seaborg Report. This later became a blueprint for granting basic research with graduate students' education. In 1960, Seaborg was appointed Chancellor at the University of California, Berkeley. In 1961, he was named chairman of the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission, a position he held for 10 years. During his time, he played a key role in the conclusion of the treaty that banned the testing of nuclear weapons in the atmosphere. In 1974, a new element was discovered in LRL, which was named after Seaborg. The new element, Seaborium, was the first element to be named after a living person. Over time, Seaborg and his colleagues were able to create nine other new elements, Americum, Curium, Berkelium, Californium, Einsteinium, Fermium, Mendelevium, Seaborium, and Noblium. His love for education continued through his life. He shared his work with his students at UC Berkeley. In 1983, President Ronald Reagan appointed Seaborg to serve on the National Commission of Excellence in Education. He was a member that the U.S. was falling behind other countries in the field of science education and worked with other scientists and educators to bring up the standards for science education. He felt that science education was too socially oriented and not nearly focused enough on the hard science. California Governor Pete Wilson appointed Seaborg to a head of a committee that proposed to change California's science curriculum despite outcries from labor organizations and others. Seaborg died in February 1999 at his home in Lafette. Glenn Seaborg was one of the most greatest scientists of all time. His work helped prolong and save the lives of many people. His discovery of new elements with over a hundred isotopes, his work on the Manhattan Project, his servitude under the reign of ten presidents, and the teaching of students at UC Berkeley are only a summary of the great work this man has accomplished.